Hello everybody, it's time for another update in the indoor arena circles. Um, now this is originally going to come out, you know, a few days later, in fact this is gonna, I was going to try and do this on Saturday, but you know what, I decided, you know what, there's been a lot of things happening, you know, since we last updated a couple, not even two weeks ago, so I wanted to get it out today, so let's get it out, let's get this done. Um, I'm just going to say it right now, the IFL has not released their schedule yet, but there are some other things going on in the IFL that we need to talk about. Uh, Duke City is incompetent. I don't know how many times they've had coaches. You know, they've, It seems like they've announced a new coach like every three months. I don't understand what's going on with them. This doesn't make any sense. You know, they can keep posting about birthdays all they want to, but every time I see something about, you know, announcing a new coach, it, it's usually some phantom post that's like, oh, congratulations to our head coaches, and there you go, and another new coach was just announced for Duke City, not even, not even a couple days ago. Like, this is, this is really, really tough. This is really, really weird, man. So Quad City, remember, they said they were coming back. They're coming back. They're holding tryouts on Saturday, October the 16th. I believe that's a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. They're holding tryouts. Good for them. You know, a lot of people said they were going to be, you know, one of the casualties of 2020, and here they are hosting tryouts and stuff like that, getting things done. Good on them. Good on them right there. Congrats to them. Um, the CIF, the biggest thing that has happened from the CIF in the past couple of days is that the Wichita Force had owed high schools about four that four thousand to five thousand dollars owed a couple of high schools out in the Wichita area that amount of money and nobody was able to, those high schools did not get their money until the news finally you know broke that broke that information out there you know got that information out there and Wichita you know they this was from a game in 2019 so this was over two years ago in which Wichita was supposed to give these four schools these four high schools or whatever or middle schools or whatever they're called or I don't know I don't remember the actual schools but these schools they was performing at halftime during the game uh, during a Wichita game and they never got their money. They never got the money for anything, um, for whatever competition it was. They never got their money at all. And the biggest picture here is that their social media pages are gone. Facebook, gone. Twitter, gone. Now, let me check right now. Let me check right now and see. You know, I'm going to see. I'm going to see. You know, we're going to see if the Wichita Force, you know, if they still have their Facebook up. Because, I mean, right now, you don't do you see if you look it up you don't see it you don't see it we're gonna look again and look at that the account doesn't exist wow it doesn't exist the Twitter account is gone Facebook is gone what happened and I already said the CIF is gonna have to modify their schedule anyway so you know this could be the first modification right here. You know, they played in a casino in this year, and nobody, nobody in the Wichita, I've looked at the Wichita forums, you know, on Facebook and stuff like that. They didn't like the casino. They didn't like it. Like, people had to move around and, you know, do, you know, they had to move around, and the field was not safe. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, the fields in the indoor game are much harder you know but this was definitely not safe you know the dashboards were these inflatable walls which you know people did not like at all and were not technically safe either you know, I've seen these inflatable walls in other lower leagues but this was a really really bad sign for the CIF to have this even happen and we all know the issues that came from the casino situation this year covered them extensively so what in the world is going on with the force you know it's going to be a long off season for the CIF. I, I, I really thought, you know, things would be better for them, you know, after I said, you know, a couple months ago that they won their, their regular season by getting through these hardships. And here we are. These hardships are hindering them in their growth. So, 
very disappointing there. Um, but the big thing here is that the NAL, they have added the Iron Man rule. The Iron Man rule was an old AFL staple. Now, I grew up with the Iron Man rule, you know, getting phased out. This was a, I grew up, you know, around that time when the AFL was on NBC, and, you know, that's when I started watching back in the day. And around that time, the Iron Man rule was getting phased out and things like that, you know, by Elway and big money owners. And it's been mixed, the reaction to adding the Iron Man rule back because a lot of players don't seem to like it. There are some that like it. You know, some have played both ways, but a lot of people don't seem to care. Of course, you know, Tom Manas was able to clear it up. Albie's head coach was able to clear that up. You know, it seems that the rosters won't be changing. There'll still be 21 active guys on the roster, 25 total, I believe. But, again, you know, there's supposed to be like two, two, three special players that play both sides. And it's just it's not worth that risk in 2021 we we've seen you know you know it, it was cool back in the day but I don't think a lot of people noticed or cared now we notice and now we care you know because you know player safety has become a bigger bigger issue you know over the past decade or so like this is not you know especially for a two and a half hour game you know, two hour, 45 minute game, you know, it's, you know, with the 20 minute halftime, of course, you know, so that's like an hour or so, a little bit over an hour of you being on the field, you know, for both, you know, that first half, you're going to be on for an hour, and that second half, you're going to be on for an hour, so that's two hours on the field, potential entries could be abound, and there's, and there's again, there's the, um, there's the issue with the salary cap as well, which is what we're going to get into with this other thing that came up from the NAL this past couple days, which is Greg Fenario, the owner of the West Virginia Rough Riders. Again, I made a bad, I made a video that was in bad taste about him in the past. I hope you didn't watch that. You know, I made a video that was in bad taste in the past. You know, kind of criticizing him and the way you know West Virginia was being run. You know, but. Now I can see, again, I, I changed my stance a couple weeks later, if I'm not mistaken. I'm changing my stance again, which is to say, you know, good on Frenario for calling out this nonsense. Because this, again, the Iron Man rule doesn't really, doesn't really need to be necessary to try to differentiate the NAL from anybody else in 2021 and beyond. Fornelli has been trying to sell his team. He's been trying to sell the LA Kiss turf. He still has the turf. He doesn't have the end zones. He still has the turf. He doesn't have the end zones. He's been trying to sell that turf for a while. And West Virginia has been trying to get into the NAL, it seems, for a while. But yet, they haven't been able to because their, the league contract hasn't been figured out yet. Their salary cap, they disagreed with with the NAL. I don't know what the salary cap for the NAL is. But we all know they... They and the IFL pretty much has paid the same amount, if not a little bit more. You know, you know, like around two hundred fifty dollars a game. We've all deduced that. And again, the Iron Man rule, which was a bad rule, it, it does, it doesn't, it doesn't really need to be necessary in twenty twenty one. I've, I said it on another uh, podcast type deal that it's not really necessary. And again, it's just not necessary now. We don't need it. At least Columbus is signing guys, but West Virginia, it seems like, you know, the speculation now for them is, you know, where did they go from here? We'll see on November 1st, which is the next time I'll come to you with some indoor, you know, updates. So November 1st, mark that down in your calendars and stuff like that, so that's the next time I'll come up with that. And we'll see what they choose. Do they go to the IFL and try to be a bridge for Massachusetts? Because it seems like they can sell out the um, the arena, West Beckham Arena, but you know, again, it doesn't look like again. It, it, it's kind of a wishy-washy type thing. You know, West Virginia it seems like they do have money with Fornario pumping money into the team, but you know, at the same time, it's the lack of money as well. You know, they didn't play in 2020. They played an alumni game. But that was about it. So they didn't get much of anything. 
you know. So the team, you know, was in a precarious situation to where, you know, they went dormant for 2020 because of the virus. And that, well, that's a good call for them to go 2020. A lot of people, you know, a lot of, you know, people who are very knowledgeable about the about the business of indoor football, you know, said this is not a good idea to be going up in 2020 and 2021. And we went ahead and got a 2021 season off anyway. So, we'll again, we'll see what what these guys in West Virginia can do. You know, obviously they've been up they've been updating their Facebook page, they've been updating their Twitter, they've been they they seem they're still alive in some capacity. So, we'll see what West Virginia does. So, how about the AWFC? They have a new logo. Good on them. They concluded their league meetings. And remember their league meetings will last Saturday. And they've got a new logo. I actually quind of like the new logo. Maybe the look maybe the C part, you know, looked kinda of like a moon to some people. You know, I know one guy was like, Yeah, this kinda of looks like a moon, but it's football. It's a football with the C on it, but it's got it's the C. Uh, you, the, you'll see the logo in the thumbnail. But, um, yeah, the AWFC has concluded their league meetings. It seems like, you know, they're going to go forward with the six teams. Remember, the San Diego Red Tails are new, and we don't know where they'll play yet, so I'm not even going to speculate on that because I haven't seen anything about that. What I have seen is that Wenatchee Valley, um, Wenatchee Valley, or however you said her name, they will be going back to their home arena. Remember, they didn't get to play in their arena. 2021 because of um, the, the coronavirus and it seems like I saw a package I saw a little video package stating that they will have six home games next year you know again remember they didn't have an arena last year and you know it is what it is there but so it seems like the AWFC is leaning towards their going with 12 games because again it just Seems like you know they're gonna go with 12 games for their schedule. And that's a good amount of games right there. Way better than what the CIF has done. They're with them only having 10. And I've already, I've already set my piece on that a couple weeks ago. So how about fan control football? We haven't talked about fan control football in a while on this channel. I am very sorry about that. I to be honest, I forgot they existed. You know, remember they had a good season in 2021 and. Summer in like that, you know, the window after the Super Bowl, and you know, they've signed a deal with the NBC streaming service NBC LX, which is like another streaming service that doesn't make any sense, but it's a streaming service nonetheless. Seems like they're going to come back in the spring of 2022. Their target is eight teams. I don't know how everything is going to work out. We'll keep an update on them as well. Here on the channel, and I do have this in question marks here on my notes here, which is the AAL. Again, potentially, I don't know where these two teams are going. You know, both North Texas and Charlotte. North Texas, I believe they. I don't know what they're doing. I really don't know what they're doing because they haven't really. They posted tryouts. They posted that they're holding tryouts. That's about the last thing we've. Heard. That's the only thing we've heard from them, so we haven't heard them saying that they're going to leave the AAL yet. Charlotte, on the other hand, has been posting in the NAL Facebook forums, and I don't know what their plan is because I heard, that, you know, several from several sources, you know, from several different you know places that they're either joining the AIFA or the NAL, but they, uh, I don't know what I don't know what their deal is. I don't know what going on they're posting tryouts and stuff like that they're getting things posted you know everywhere so I don't know what Charlotte's plan is and they need to get they need to get it situated they need to get it figured out but yeah it but yeah if they if you know if Charlotte joins the NAL all the NAL needs is one more team you know because it seems like West Virginia is on its way out the door which is another team you know that would be like the sixth team lost in like two years for the NAL, and that'd be a bad thing. So that's gonna do it for this update for the time being, mid-October. You know, mid-October update. Um, whenever the IFL releases the schedule, I'll just recover it in the November update, along with whatever West Virginia decides to do, and any other things that may go on. So with that being said, everybody, hope y'all enjoy y'all's day, and I'll see you guys again 
tomorrow for the NFL preview.